it's not what we study, it's what we do. Religion is a practical discipline, and it's one that we have always done ever since we uh, humanity appeared on the scene when Homo sapiens became Homo sapiens sapiens, became a human being. Um, we ha our minds very naturally segue into transcendence. We constantly have ideas and experiences that go beyond what we can say or know. Most often these are expressed in art, uh, in painting, in music. Music uh, every day confronts us with a form of knowing that doesn't depend on words. Uh, you know how it, it is in the symphony. When you're listening to the symphony, the last notes die away. And there's often a beat of silence in the auditorium before the applause begins. A very full and pregnant silence. Oh, th now theology should bring us to live into that silence, into that pregnant pause. Um, so, but religion is a practical discipline, and in the 17th century in the West, we turned it into a, a head trip. Uh, but the, uh, it's like dancing or swimming or driving, which you can't learn by texts. You have to get into the car and learn how to manipulate the vehicle. You have to get into the water and learn against what seems to be the law of gravity to float. And dancing or athletics takes you years before you develop a skill. But if you work at it, practicing daily, you can enable your body to do things that are utterly impossible to an untrained physique. And, uh, can, uh, and the religions have found that if you behave in a certain way, if you, if you uh, sort of perform certain rituals that expand your mind and make you realize that we help you to segue into transcendence and perform certain uh, acts, uh, adopt a certain lifestyle, you develop new capacities of mind and heart, just like the dancer or uh, the athletic or the aft, that make you into a whole human being. And principle of the one of these disciplines right across the board in all the faiths is compassion, the ability to feel with the other person. Compassion has to become a discipline. It's something that you do. It's no good thinking whether you agree with compassion or not. You've just got to do it, just like it's no good agreeing that it's possible to float. You just have to get into the pool and then you learn it that it's possible. Um, every single one of the major world faiths, whether we're talking about Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, Taoism, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, have all come to the conclusion that what holds us back from our best self is ego, selfishness, greed, unkindness, hatred, that all springs from a sense of thwarted ego. Uh, people don't like us as much, people threaten us, and so in various ways we cut them down to size to enhance ourselves. And the best way of getting rid of that kind of unkind, grasping, frightened ego is by compassion, which doesn't mean to feel sorry for people, it means to put yourself consistently uh, in the position of another person, put it, dethroning yourself from the centre of your world and putting another there. And that's what brings us, the religions say, into contact with what we call Brahman, Nirvana, uh, God, or Tao. Um, and every single one of the major world faiths has developed its own version of what's now known as the Golden Rule. Always treat all others as you would wish to be treated yourself. Or uh, in the Jewish and Confucian versions, don't do to others what you would not like them to do to you. And this requires that you look into your own heart, discover what gives you pain, and then refuse under any circumstance whatsoever to inflict that pain on anybody else. Don't do to others what you wouldn't like them to do to you. And they've all insisted that this is the essence of faith. Uh, that this is the test of true spirituality, not correct belief or adopting the correct sexual behaviour, or uh, a certain political behaviour. 
it's or a ritual practice. It is this uh, essential thing. And Confucius, who is the first person, as far as we know, to uh, formulate the golden rule, uh, said you do it all day and every day. All day, every day. Not just doing, as we often say, well, that's my good deed for the day. And then you can return to your ordinary life of greed and selfishness. No, you, do, you have to make that uh, act of empathy with the other uh, absolutely uh, reflexive. And if you can do that, uh, people have found that you develop a new peace, you encounter within yourself and within the other person a sacredness, a, a transcendence. Uh, and it is that that brings us into relation with the Tao. There's a very good story that shows how central that is, uh, associated uh, in the Jewish tradition with uh, Rabbi Hillel, the older contemporary of Jesus. And one day it said a pagan came to Hillel and promised that he would convert to Judaism if Hillel could recite the whole of Jewish teaching while he stood on one leg. And Hillel stood on one leg and said, that which is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. That is the Torah. And everything else is only commentary. Go and study it. Now, that's a remarkable and provocative statement. And everything in the Torah, that's the exodus from Egypt, the creation of the world in six days, uh, the 613 commandments of the Torah, all this is only a commentary on the Golden Rule. Um, and Jesus... St. Paul made the same point when he said, I can have faith that moves mountains, but if, if I lack charity, it's worth nothing.